Hello, my name is Stephen Stone and today I'm going to preview the LSA Warp 1 power amplifier. It uses as its heart a Texas Instruments TPA 3255 Pure Path Class D circuit. And uh, at uh, $1,500 it's a very reasonably priced power amp. It uh, also uses an input, buffer, and preamplifier sections from Texas Instruments. So it's pretty much a TI throughout. Uh, the parts are an OPA1642 op amp and an OPA1637 balance driver. It has a 600 watt switching mode power supply. And one of the interesting things about it, and that makes it different from most power amps, is it has a variable gain. Most basic power amps are standard is about 26 dB of gain. But uh, the LSA Warp 1 has the adjustability where inside there's a dip switch for 0, 6, 14, or 20 dB of overall gain for a maximum of 28 dB of gain or as uh, quite a bit less if you need to scale it down. Now, why would you want to have it? you have less gain, you might wonder. Well, the reason for that is it allows you to interface with a lot more preamplifiers and loudspeakers successfully. Um, on the preamplifier side, I found that a lot of high output amplifiers, uh, Clones Audio has a 25P, it's a 25 watt Texas Instruments style amplifier. It has 30 dB of gain and it's difficult to use that power amp with an active preamplifier stage. I end up hearing noise and hiss and low level hum on a lot of preamps. So I end up using a passive preamp very often with that particular amplifier. The Warp 1 gives me a little more flexibility to use either a higher gain preamplifier or a passive preamplifier depending on, on my tastes and what, I'm, what else I'm reviewing in the signal chain that might work best with it. So, on the front of the unit, you'll see, now the top is moving because I'm going to show you the insides later, um, there are three idiot, what we call idiot switches, ones for an over-temperature, ones for an amp fault, and ones for a uh, power supply fault. And when you turn it on, they'll each light briefly and, and work through their little circuit, if, if the amp's working right, which generally it is. Um, this is my second sample. My first sample after about two months, one time, I went to turn it on and all the three lights flickered. I called up LSA and they have replaced it with a second unit which has been reliable. Uh, they indicated to me this was a very rare occurrence and were quite surprised by it, but that's probably what any manufacturer would say in a similar situation, but uh, they have a good warranty and so that was not an issue. Um, let me show you the back of it. Oh, on the back, we have both single-ended and balanced inputs. We have good quality speaker connectors, on-off, and a fuse. Yeah, the fuse. So, um, it also has a reset. Yeah, turn it back around. <clears throat> okay, so I guess I'll show you the insides now. So, if we look at the inside, we can see power supply, amplifier section, input and buffer section, uh, star grounding, nice execution. It's built like a power amp, probably should be built. So, back to that. So, if you want to find out how it sounds, issue 331, which will be out in October, We'll have my description of the, the sonic characteristics of it, but I'll give you a preview. It's pretty darn good. So, till next time, Stephen Stone. Bye now.